Okay, so we have a problem like this. This is usually a problem when we after we uh, a problem that we do after we learned all those like concavity test, first and second de derivative test, and also learning about the uh, limit as x approaches to infinity or when the limit itself is infinity. So we're talking about horizontal asymptote and uh, vertical asymptote. Basically, we are putting everything together, everything that you have learned in pre-cal in algebra 2, everything all together on this one single problem. So now let's look at this problem one by one. So we have many conditions, and your goal is to graph a, uh, make a graph to satisfy all these conditions. So let's look at them one by one. And uh, the most important part is, do you know how to interpret these kind of uh, these conditions, okay, clearly and express it on a graph. So let's go ahead and draw a graph like this. And um, right here, it says f prime of 2 is equal to 0. So it would give you an idea that we have a horizontal uh, tangent line right here. Now it could be a maximum, it could be a minimum, we don't know yet, but we will find out as we move on. And it tells you that it's going to be negative 1 when 2 is 0, uh, when the x value is 2. So if I go ahead and do this graph, I can say, well, this is negative 1, this is 2, I know a point already. It's right here. Okay, f of 0 is 0. Okay. So it seems like it's going to be a minimum, but let's look at the entire uh, entire question so then we can say for sure. And I have a habit. The habit is whenever I finish uh, fulfilling the requirement, I give myself a check mark so that I don't I will not go back and look at them again. So then we look at this uh, this criterion. We have f prime of x is less than zero or negative. When it is 0 to 2, so it's negative, so somehow it's decreasing, okay, seems like a minimum to me. And then f prime of x is positive when it is greater than 2. So it's definitely going to look like a maximum, um, I mean minimum, right here. So it's positive on the left of 2, it's, uh, I mean, it's a negative slope. When it's uh, smaller than 2, between 0 and 2, and it's uh, increasing slope when it's bigger than 2. Okay, so we know it's going to be this, it's not going to be that. Okay, it's going to be a minimum. And then let's keep on looking at this. F double prime, it's negative, which means it is concave down between 0 and 1. Okay, or if x is greater than 4. So now we have here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So now we could get a little bit confusing if you don't know how to interpret this. So it's going to be concave down, but then we have to decide which part of the concave down are we looking at. Well, if you look at concave down, you have one half of the concave down, which has a positive slope. And in the outer half of the, uh, the outer half, that has a negative slope. So since we know from 0 to 2, it's going, to it's going to have a negative slope, then we should focus on this part only. We don't care about this part. So at 1, somehow it, that's an inflection point. Somewhere right here. We don't know what it is, and it doesn't matter since we don't have a particular value. So I think we are pretty safe to, to graph something like this. Okay. So it looks like a concave down to me. And then, uh, and then uh, when x is greater than 4, it's concave down. And remember that the slope is positive, so it's going to be on this part of the concave down. So let's, let's, uh, let's ignore this part. And we're going to hold on a minute because we don't know what's going on next. And here it sets f double prime. It's positive between 1 and 4, so it's going to be concave up. Okay? And, well, I guess it makes sense because we were expecting a minimum. So we can say it's a minimum right here. Okay, it's an inflection point. It's a concave up, but that's a minimum. 
and it's the slope is going to be positive again. Okay, and then what else? And then it sets um, uh, limit as x approaches to infinity of the function is equal to 1. So that means there's a horizontal asymptote at 1. So, and, uh, and the other thing is f of negative x is equal to f of x. Now we can take care of this at the very last. So let's go to here. Doesn't matter where we cut the, uh, the x-axis. Well, it, since it doesn't say any point in particular, that means we can cut the uh, x-axis uh, in any point. Okay, so we have to have a uh, uh, con so it's going to be uh, concave down at x equals to four, and it's concave up from one to four. So that means there must be some sort of inflection point right here. Okay, let's say hypothetically right here. So we have this um, concave up like this. And then we have a concave down like that again. Okay, and since uh, we have the limit as x approaches to infinity of the function is equal to 1, then we should put an arrow right here. Okay, now, so we have fulfilled this one, we have fulfilled this one, and this one as well. All the slopes are being taken care of. Okay, and so the very last thing is what's this part? f of negative x is equal to f of x, meaning that if you put a negative x value, it's going to have the same function value as if you put the positive x value in there. So what does that mean? It means it's a reflection across the y-axis. So now we have to uh, set up our scale, I mean the axes, so 1, 2, 3, 4, all negative, and then we have a point right here, and we have an inflection point somewhere right here, so it's concave down, and then concave up, that's the minimum, and then we set the uh, inflection point right here, so it's going to concave up, and it's going to cut the x-axis somewhere right here. Just like that. Okay. So now your teacher is going to grade based on your fulfillment of the requirements. There are more than one correct answer. There's no set answer on these questions. But you must fulfill everything such as concave down from 0 to 1, concave up from 1 to 4, that means you have to show your acknowledgement where these two are your inflection points. And then showing that you understand the slope is decreasing from 0 to 2, and the slope is increasing from 2 and onward. Okay. And then what else? Uh, then, we, then we have the concavity, concave down, concave up, and concave down again, and then showing the reflection. So this is one kind of problem that we say, all right, you have to know all these requirements to show your drawing skill. And we don't need a, uh, uh, we don't need a graphing calculator. It's purely your understanding of all these notations. Okay?